Running a private Minecraft server means total control. Basically, you can build your own world, set your own rules, and play with as many friends as you want at any given time. So if you are ready to take your gaming to the next level, keep on watching, because in this video, I'll show you how to easily create and manage a Minecraft server using Hostinger's virtual private server. And I'll specifically be focusing on Minecraft Java Edition. So let's get right into it. So I mean, first things first, to set up your virtual private server, you'll need to purchase a Minecraft server hosting plan. And I mean, don't worry here because no complicated commands and coding will be needed. And I'll actually be walking through the whole thing together with you. So let me get to my laptop. So just head over to our Minecraft server hosting landing page by clicking the very first link in the description down below where you can select the best plans for your needs and then let Hostinger just take care of the setup. Now the most affordable plan starts at $499 per month and it includes four gigabyte RAM as well as a built-in DDoS protection, also free weekly backups and even an AI assistant whose name is Cody to help you with commands. And the custom game panel also makes it super easy to install mods, change settings, and just keep everything running really smoothly. But the best part here is that there's no player limit and the setup is just instant so you and your friends can jump in and start right away. And you can even choose a server location close to you so you can avoid lag and keep the gameplay really smooth. And now if you're planning to play with only a few friends and have a couple of extra plugins or mods, then you'll be fine with plans game panel one or two. But if you need more players and you plan to have as many mods as possible, then you might benefit from higher tier plans and the resources that they do offer. But if you want to be completely sure, you can always double check with the AI sales assistant, which is in the bottom right corner, and it will help you out with everything. And also guys, don't forget to use our code MC10 for an extra 10% off your purchase. And as I already mentioned before, one of the main Hostinger's VPS hosting perks is the really easy setup. So basically, once you've got your hosting plan, just log into HPanel and navigate to VPS. Here, just select your newly purchased Minecraft server hosting plan and just fill in a few quick details here. So just first pick your server location and the closer it is to you and your players, the smoother the gameplay and your whole experience will be here. Then just create a password for your game panel and you're basically all set to move on. You can access your server by going to the VPS overview page here. Here you'll find all the really important info about your server, like resource usage, operating system, uh, you know, panel access, IP address, and SSH login details as well. You'll also see really helpful tutorials and tips to guide you along the way and make things really easy for you. All right, guys, now we're nearly done here. And the last thing you need to do is to configure your Minecraft game panel. Now, to do that, you can just hit manage panel button in the same overview page that you were in, then log in with your details that you entered earlier and you'll land on the main menu. Now, the first thing you'll want to do here is to click create instance. For the application, pick Minecraft Java edition from this list. Now, the panel will automatically set it up with version 1.21 tricky trials. Now, here you can give your instance a name if you want and under after creation, I really recommend leaving it on update and start always. This just makes things easier down the line for you. Just trust me on this. And then just hit create instance and just wait for it to appear, which usually takes only a few minutes or even just a few seconds. Oh, and by the way, if you see an error running message pop up, don't worry about that. That's totally normal. It's just because we haven't accepted the Minecraft license agreement yet. So basically, once it's done loading, all you have to do is click manage on your instance instance and accept Minecraft and user license agreements. And that's it. And while I mean mission complete here, your Minecraft server is now up and running online. So now all you got to do is go to the connection info section. Let me do this with you. So yeah, just go to the connection info section, copy the endpoint numbers and share it with your pals to let them join in on your server. I mean, pretty easy, right? And monitoring your server is also really, really straightforward. Just right here on the main dashboard, 
you can check your server's status and keep an eye on important metrics like CPU and memory usage right over here. And you can also stop or restart your server at any given time. Or you can just ask the AI assistant Cody to do it for you. I mean, that's always an option. Uh, and if you head over to configuration menu on the left sidebar here, you'll be able to tweak all the settings to your liking and really make the game your own. And hey, if you ever want to try out something else, you can use the same exact steps to host other titles with dedicated servers on your hosting or game panel. And you can even run multiple games on the same VPS as long, I mean, as long as it's got enough power to actually handle it. Or of course, you can always upgrade your game server if you need that. And hosting or supports over 100 games. And if you're curious to see which ones it supports, you can check out the full list on this page right here that is on the screen. And I'll also drop the link in the description down below. Okay, now before you jump into the game, there are a few things you can do to make your Minecraft server even better than it already is. The first thing is, of course, mods. They can transform vanilla Minecraft in countless ways. Whether you want better performance, new mobs, or crazy new mechanics, there's a mod for pretty much everything these days. And if you're not sure where to begin or which ones to choose, we have a full article where we share the 40 best Minecraft mods. So be sure to check it out. The link for that will also be in the description below. Now, the second thing that can improve your gameplay is enabling port forwarding. Yes, I mean, creating your own Minecraft world on a local server is really exciting, but it can get a bit boring playing alone since only you can access it. That's why you can enable port forwarding and allow users outside your network to join the game using the public IP address. And if you want a really detailed tutorial on this, you can actually check out this article right here and the link for it, it will actually also be in the description below. But do keep in mind that if you're playing on a local network, it's way safer to keep it off just to avoid any security risks. I mean, those can really happen here. And actually, speaking of risks, like with any server setup, you might run into a few hiccups along the way. So let's just really quickly go over some of the most common Minecraft server errors and how to really easily fix them. Now, one of the main errors you might come across is this server responded with an invalid server key error. Now, this usually happens when either of your Minecraft server or your launcher is outdated. And if it's your server, try accessing it through the local host address and restarting the client. And also this specific error usually shows up when launching the server using an exe file. So I mean, try just using the jar file instead and maybe it'll just go away. Now, next up is the you are not whitelisted on the server error. Now, this just means your username hasn't been added to the list of players that are allowed to join the server. And to fix this error, just turn on the whitelist feature by typing whitelist on. Then add the player's username with this command right here, which is whitelist add player name. And I mean, if you want to double check, you can always enter the whitelist list command. And by the way, if you're entering these commands in game, just add a slash before it, like just basically this that you're seeing on the screen. So slash whitelist add player name. And I mean, that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, another really common issue is the connection refused connect error. Now, this usually means that your connection request is just being blocked or dropped by the server. So to fix it, try joining the server using a different internet connection. Sometimes it's just like a network issue on your end. So you can just always try that. But if that doesn't help, check your firewall settings and make sure Minecraft and your launcher are added to the exception list. And if none of that works, just try reinstalling your client and restarting the server altogether and that often will clear up any misconfigurations for you. So I mean these are just a few of the typical issues you might run into but most of them have I mean as we saw pretty straightforward fixes and you'll be back to playing your game in no time. And also if you ever get stuck or need help with commands don't hesitate to ask the AI assistant Cody. He won't judge you one bit I promise and it's there to just help you out so make sure you use it. So I mean, there you have it, guys. Like I said before, setting up a Minecraft server with Hostinger is a complete breeze, and it's a really nice investment to boost your gaming experience as well. Now, once your Minecraft server is up and running, knowing some really useful server commands can make managing it even smoother. So watch this video next to learn 20 essential commands that you'll definitely find use for, trust me. Now, the video link will also be down below in the description, and also make sure to hit that thumbs up if you found this 
this video useful and subscribe for more content just like this in the future. Now take care and I'll see you in the next video.